So, um, animation now. That's a little different. Cause to me, it's kind of it's kind of like um. It, it's kind of like it's oversaturated like sports, but it's not that oversaturated. If that makes any sense, it's basically for watching animations like Disney, Pixar, and all that. And that's basically what it does. All it does is is it kind of over sharpens the the lines of the cartoons, so you see more bolder cartoon figures and stuff like that. So that's basically all. It adds more color and it adds more sharpening to the to the animation. Now, there's a couple more presets that you're not supposed to use unless you're doing slides on the TV. I don't know why you have a TV to do slides, which is basically photo vivid, photo standard, and photo custom. They all do the same thing, except one is <laughs> vivid, one is standard, and one is custom. So... What Vivid, what Vivid does now, Vivid is just suitable for like bright and dark colors with edge enhancement. Basically what the Vivid does, but it's it's not for moving, moving items, moving footage. It's just for static footages. So again, standard is the same thing. You're not going to be using this unless you're watching slides on the, on the TV. So try to stay away from those now. Now we go to game mode now, which is, this is a little suggestive to a lot of people. A lot of people use game mode while playing the game. That's because of the input lag. All those things are are shut off. All the, um, let's see if I can go into it real quick. Basically all the, um, let's see if I go into it. All the advanced settings, stuff like the black. Adjust is off, um, advanced contrast is off, auto look at them and is medium, I can't believe that. And these two are on, I don't know why they're on. Maybe they don't really do anything to it. But it also takes off motion flow, so you can't turn on motion flow unless it's going to introduce lag. As soon as you turn on motion flow, it just defeats the purpose of in-game mode. So don't even go past any of these things when it comes to game mode. Just stick to this area over here. Those top four right there. But the quality is decreased though. I'm not even going to lie to you. When you do put it on game mode, quality is decreased. Like good, uh, it's noticeable that picture quality is not that refined when it comes to game mode. But hey, it does give you better input lag. So if you're like a true gamer of first person shooters and tournaments of fighting games, you want to play in game mode. Me, I'm not really a, like a pro gamer like that. So that that doesn't really matter to me. Game mode doesn't really matter to me, but a lot of people it does. So that's basically what it does. Less input lag. Now, um, there's another settings that they put on an update called, let me go back to it, called graphics mode, which is sort of like game mode, but it's for computer, if that makes any sense. It's, you use it for watching, watching Using a TV as a computer monitor. That's basically what the graphics is for. It just it, it just pops when it comes to watching like charts and tables and graphs and illustrations. It just pops that pops those more out of everything else on on the, the the content. Like watching on a on a um on a um computer monitor. That's basically what graphics mode is. So that's like all the presets unless they come out with an update for more for more um presets, which I kinda doubt. Unless they're gonna come out with a Dolby Vision preset. But yeah, I use Cinema Pro. I would stay with Cinema Pro because it has the most accuracy when it comes to um colors. When it comes to detail, it has the most accuracy. Now if we go into 
advanced picture settings now. I try to explain what these controls do to you guys. Now brightness is backlight on the Sony displays. All it does is adjust the luminance of the picture, makes it brighter and makes it darker. It doesn't lose a lot of power when it comes to making the, the TV brighter. So when you have a new TV and you have the little sticker that tells you <laughs> that tells you how much um, electricity you're gonna use for the whole year, that's you could take that out when you max out the brightness because it's not gonna be that. Um, contrast adjust the white level of the the the, um, the image makes whiter white makes darker dark so not, not darker dark but it keeps the whites white but if you go down lower the whites are not that white but I wouldn't max it out because it does take away the detail so I will keep it around 90 the gamma now is just the light and dark balance it's basically if you go lower you're just in the dark if you go higher you're just in the white I'll keep it at normal Basically, people use um, the gamma if they're in a a dark a dark room, they'll lower the gamma. If they're in a really bright room, they'll hide the gamma so they can see the picture more clear. Black level is brightness on other TVs, but black level is just adjusting the black on the TV. So, you want to... Well, I, I did some calibrations on the black on the black level, and I realized that 47 is like the the best point, because after 47, stuff start getting bright. The black start getting bright, and you want to keep it under under 50. Don't go don't go over 50, because that's when it really gets that's when the blacks really get gray. So that's basically what the black level does. Now black adjust now that's that's when it gets a little tricky. All it does is enhances the black image for a stronger contrast. Now if you have your contrast set up to this much, you don't really need black adjust that high. Cause all it does is add more contrast which might which might um crush your blacks. But when it comes to video games, you really want black. So you would turn that on. You can keep it at medium. Medium is like the lowest you want to go when it comes to video games now for movies now that's all subjective because certain movies are all, they're all different certain movies are shot in dark scenes certain movies are shot in light scenes so that's all kind of just have to kind of just watch the movie and see what the black adjust would do for it now advanced contrast now all that does is automatically adjust the contrast based on the picture brightness so if it if you have a static image, you're not gonna the advanced contrast is not gonna do anything. It's when you go to different scenes that's when it gets the picture gets brighter or it gets lower. It's advanced contrast. So certain scenes when you need more contrast, it turns on the contrast. Some certain scenes when you don't need contrast, it turns it off. Vice versa, you know. So you want to keep that on high so you know you get the best contrast when it comes to certain images. Don't worry, it doesn't crush anything unless you're watching an old, old movie or something like that. It doesn't crush anything, so you don't got to worry about it crushing anything. Just keep that on all the time. Now, we're going to go down to auto look dimming. There's no reason for anyone to have this on off. I don't know why even they even gave you an option to turn it off. That doesn't make any sense at all. You want to keep this on at all. At all only bad part about auto look of them is that if you're in a dark room and you have it on high you might see blooming you might introduce blooming so that's a preference to you you're gonna get better picture quality with it on high but you might introduce some blooming so that's kind of like I would say a preference to you <laughs> I wouldn't honestly I wouldn't I wouldn't keep it on nothing else but high. Now, extended dynamic range now. That adjusts the peak peak luminance, which is the brightness level to display the brightest whites and the deepest deepest blacks. If you watch an HDR, keep this on. If you're not watching HDR, it might like overblow certain 
certain scenes might look too white or too faded out when it, if you're not watching HDR, which is SDR. So that's kind of subjective. Sorry about that. Um, color now. We'll go to the next chapter, which is color. Color is just saturation of the colors. You go down low, you get black and white. You go high, you get tan and salon. You don't want tan and salon, so you keep it in the middle. By default, 50 is the middle, which is like accurate color. But sometimes you just need a little pop, so I'll keep it at 60 to 65. I wouldn't go over 65. Some people go 90. I don't think you need that much color. U is just a... It's just the color, the, the color tone. Basically, if you go red, you're turning, you're turning the, I forgot what you call that thing. You're turning the color, you're turning the color wheel, basically. So you want to keep it at zero because you're going to really mess up colors or whatever. You're throwing off the colors. Color temperature, adjust the temperature of the color. Um, a lot of people... <laughs> think um expert one is good i don't really like expert one it's like a a piss filter to me on certain movies it's just too yellow but i guess if you watch all your movies like that it this might be the best the most accurate um color temperature but to me i'm constantly wa watching movies and constantly watching games and stuff like that and it just the yellow is not working for me so you, you can keep it on warm if you want which is between obviously between expert one and neutral but when it comes to everything neutral is, is basically just in the middle you want to just stick with neutral or warm if you want to watch movies but like expert don't go expert it gets too yellow it's like it's like it's a fog and stuff outside um yeah keep it at neutral advanced color temperature you don't need to mess with that unless you like a professional calibrator that has all the tools and stuff like, and stuff like that so just stay out of that live color now but all it does is emphasizes the the brightness of the colors, the vividness of the colors. So if you want a punchier red, a punchier blue, punchier green, you turn that on high. Though certain footages and certain content, it might it might be too much color. So you want to turn it on medium or low. But I will keep it on high. If you have keep that on high. If if you want, if it seems too oversaturated to you, just go down to go to color and set, lower the color gain a little bit. And you should have like a a even distribution of of colors. All right. In the next part, I'm gonna go through the other settings.